Hey, this is Gunsmith Beard back with another gun video this week. I want to thank you guys for returning. I really appreciate your loyalty to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Also, thank you to our channel supporters, which are Brownells, Swamp Fox Optics, and Shooter Innovations. So this week, I'm going to talk about a build that I did, uh, I think it's been a year or so ago. It was a collaboration build between several different companies, and we're going to talk about that and those companies and the build itself so you guys can kind of see a very interesting and very cool build. But before we do that, let's take a close look at that build. And so we'll be right back after we take a deep dive and look at it up close. All right, welcome back guys. So now that you've had an up close look at the build of the week, let's talk about it. So like I said, this was a collaboration between three different companies and this is a very heavy build um, because this is an LR 308 DPMS patterned build. It's not an AR-15 and it's also not an AR-10. And we're going to talk about the difference between an LR-308 and an AR-10 really quick. So before we move on, let's talk about that because that's kind of the elephant in the room. I don't know how many guys will tell me, they or girls, will tell me they have an AR-10. And I look closely at it and I'm like, you don't have an AR-10. So what's the difference? So I'm going to do it on this side. If you look right here where the upper and the lower meet, see that line? Hopefully I can get that on camera. See that line? If that line is curved, that means you have a DPMS patterned LR-308 rifle. You do not have an AR-10. And so if you have an AR-10, it's not a curved line, it's a very drastic cut line on the receiver and the upper and lower receiver. So if you have an AR-10, you're looking for a very straight line. If you have an LR-308, you're looking for a curved line. And that is the quickest, honest way to see what you have and what the, the compatibility between the parts are. Um, that will tell you really quick what you're dealing with. And obviously I could go in greater de depth to go in between the patterns and because there's a lot and compatibility and all that stuff, but I think that's better for another video. So let's talk about this build. Like I said, Aero Precision, their M5 series, they gave us a lot of the components for this build. Uh, they sent me a, an 18 inch 308 Winchester upper. So this is not a 6.5, even though I highly recommend a 6.5 because of the the ballistic advantage you have with that. Not to say that the 308 is not uh, good either. It's just, there's a lot um, of great data on the 6.5 Creedmoor, or even the 6 Creedmoor for that matter. But anyway, this is a 308 Winchester build and I love it. It shoots really well and it shoots pretty far. So I did take their standard black receiver and I did Cerakote it and gray. Um, a lot of guys call this primer gray or even sniper gray, um, but that is this really cool finish that I have on it. Um, so a big thank you to Aero Precision for giving us a lot of the bones or meat and potatoes for this build. And so it is a really good build. Uh, I really love shooting it. It's one of my favorites. Um, so the other part of it. I am a member of the Bureau of Propaganda. And if you're not familiar with uh, BOP or Bureau of Propaganda, it's a program that's created by Brownells for content creators or even to a uh, firearms lover. It's a family is the best way to say that. It's, it's part of the 2A community, but it's a, an exclusive 
uh, group of guys that work for Brownells uh, as an ambassador, pretty much for their brand. And so I had Brownells laser engrave Bureau of Propaganda on the side of this build because uh, to be honest, it's one of those things um, you can't join the Bureau of Propaganda. You have to be asked to be a member. And so it's an exclusive group of guys that are a part of that group. So I'm proudly wear the flag or the banner, so to speak, for BOP. So the other company that I have happily worked with, and you guys have heard me talk about them, is Swamp Fox. So, of course, Swamp Fox heard that I was doing a collaboration build, and they're like, we would love to donate the glass for this build. And so they sent me the Arrowhead 1x10 uh, LPVO, and I'll give you all the details and specs on this reticle and optic in the description box so you guys can see exactly what I have. They did send the mount, which is their Gorilla mount. It's superb. It's really well engineered. Uh, it's a really well made mount. I love it. Uh, some of the other parts that are, went on this build that uh, weren't provided that I had to go source out was um, my selector here. Um, ambidextrous selector I wanted uh, a different one I cannot remember to be honest which one I went with I have anti-walk pens because I am running a trigger tech flat shoed trigger um, this is the diamond series and we had talked about in another video this build in particular and how I had a couple different triggers in it at the range and they all failed so I'll tell you uh, which triggers I had in it that failed. And then obviously we, we know I put a trigger tech in it. So when I was at the range after, when I finally got all this together, everything's painted, everything's dried and ready to test on the range. Um, I had a CMC trigger in this build and it did not work uh, at all, not even close. Um, and then I had a hyper trigger that I pulled out of my toolbox and I dropped that in really quick. That one also failed and did not work. So I had two duds from two different companies on this build, it did not work. Um, I rushed uh, at the time to Brownells headquarters um, because I did live in Iowa and I grabbed a Trigger Tech Diamond Series for 308 and I dropped it in this. We ran back to the range and it was like night and day. Uh, had no compatibility issues. The trigger worked all the time. Never had any hiccups or, or you know, misfunction, um, mishaps or whatever. The trigger worked like it should. It was reliable, dependable, and of course, it's a trigger tech, so it's a good, good quality trigger. The charging handle is, uh, <laughs> you might have guessed it, a Radian. Uh, so it's a Raptor 308 series, not an AR-15 series. So it's ambidextrous with the wider wings on it. So if you're not familiar with shooting with optics, you have to have a bigger charging handle because if you don't, you tend to scrape your knuckles trying to charge the weapon. This is the buttstock that I went with. It is by Luth AR. Uh, it's fully adjustable. So the length of pull is adjustable. It does slide on the tube back and forth. Um, so you can adjust it that way. Um, the, it does have length of pull adjustments by using these knurled adjustment knobs right here. So one of them adjusts the length of pull. The other one will adjust the, the cheek height so you can get a good cheek weld. I will tell you that even if you run it all the way closed, this won't work. Um, because of the charging handle. So you're going to have to set it at a longer uh, length of pull. So when you run your charging handle, it doesn't actually strike the cheek piece. So that way you know that if you're in storage or you're, it's going to go in a bag or safe or whatever, you can uh, collapse it so it's a shorter, more compact package. Um, but when you go to shoot it, you're going to have to pull it back out, you know, to the position that works with the charging handle without it actually hitting the cheek piece. Um, the 
grip I'm using is Ergo Grips. Uh, Ergo Grips make really good rubber, so soft rubber uh, grips. I like them because if you're gonna shoot your gun a lot, it's very comfortable. And so if you had a very aggressive textured grip, it eats up your hands if you're not wearing gloves. If your gun is a lot more enjoyable and comfortable to shoot, I feel like you're gonna shoot it more. Uh, as far as the muzzle device, uh, this is the cookie cutter by Strike Industries. It is a big honking muzzle device. It is very loud, but it reduces almost, <laughs> I don't wanna say almost all, but a lot of the recoil. So it is, it's a big boy and it's kind of the shape of a cookie or a cookie cutter and that's what gives it the name it has this gnarly port right here that allows a lot of those hot gases to escape keeping your muzzle pretty flat when you're shooting so if you're not going to run a suppressor and you want something that has high performance even though it is a, a little bit louder this is a great one to run especially on an lr308 build regardless if you go with a 308 winchester or a 65 premore i've used both they work really really well so Again, this collaboration build uh, was by Error Precision, Swamp Fox Optics, and of course Brownells with the Bureau of Propaganda branding on the side, uh, member for life. So if you guys have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. If you have a build like this or have a question about building a build like this, I'd love to hear, uh, message me or drop some comments below and I'll be glad to help you in that process or answer any questions that you might have. As always, thank you for your time and I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one.